All right, hey everybody here. This is Adam Scott, uh, D and D Club. I'm here with my friend Brian, RPG and Co. And our guest today, welcome to uh, Lawfully Chaotic. We figured out a name for the show, so I'm just excited to be here tonight with everybody. Um, we're gonna have a good time. We'll be on here for about an hour. And and our guest tonight, uh, Malcolm Trotter, gentleman game master. Malcolm, we're glad you're here, man. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, tell us where you're, where where are you, man? I know where you are, but where tell everybody yeah, who yeah. know you, where you at? How are things going? I'm down here in the Los Angeles, uh, California uh, area. Yeah, and uh, but just you know running games uh, from this little my little dungeon, <laughs> this little hole in the wall, and so I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, nice, absolutely. Oh, this has been a long time coming. So yeah. thanks for joining us. Yeah, we've had yeah, this in the, like as an idea to the three of us get together for, I don't know, it's been on and off several months, maybe even half a year. We've been, I was going to say six months. Yeah. 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 So, so by the way, Adam, turns out you are the creative genius that came up with the name. So bravo. <laughs> well, you just, you type something in the, in, into our discord. And then I just saw it. And I, my wife accuses me of just picking the first, like, she's like, you have the, you just take whatever name you see. And you don't. She's like, you don't create anything. You just see a word, and you're like, that's a great word. She's like, I don't know how you got it. She's like, I don't know how you built a business on the word D and D club. She's like, it's a terrible name. All it does is just like three letters and a simple word. So I don't know. I'm just looking at. Well, it. well, I, I, I love it. So and the yeah. the, the name and, and everything came together like really well. So hey, it's, awesome. It just and the the graphic. I like the little smoking. Was this? It's a. You guys can't see it because it's you know we're. We're casting, but it's a. Uh, <laughs> everyone else can see it. It's the the demon head guy with the cigar, the oh, smoking do. devil. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty badass. Yeah. That pretty artwork, bad. pretty uh, badass. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. So, I don't know what Mal. What do you have going on right now in your neck of the woods? I mean, we have our topic of the day that we can talk about in a little bit. But what's going on with you? I know you know you and I have connected a lot with the pro DMing thing, and I know I always yes. tend to get on that tangent. So I don't want to talk about that, but I want to throw it to you and just tell us what you've got going on. What are some of your hobby projects? professionals projects within the community or uh, D and D world, RPG world. What do you got going on right now, man? Yeah, man. Uh, thanks for asking. I, I think, you know, you're, you're one of the main kind of pro DMs. I start, you know, looking up to when we first started doing it. So I, I love what you're, what you got going right now. Um, I've always leaned heavily on, you know, I always share that my style is to try to be as cinematic and immersive as possible. In every one of my games, I always want players to feel like, in all the other things that we want D and D to be as a, as a dungeon master, I want to be a, a referee. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a good facilitator, but I also want to bring a little, a little pizzazz, a little, a little showmanship to, to the game. Um, and uh, without trying to be, you know, not trying to be a Matt Mercer, not trying to be like, just trying to be myself, but in my own kind of style. And so I've just been working on that. I built, we, uh, we have a similar kind of set up pay, you know, people, pay to play the games or pay for a seat at the table but i have right now i have a theros uh, uh kind of like a mmo style world where there are three there are three uh campaign uh groups living and running in theros all at the same time right now awesome. a group of That's nine a group cool. of six and like a group of five how do you facilitate um, that with do you have different dungeon masters doing that do you have one do you run do you run all the games do you partner with dms to run each different session how many players do you have for each of those yep that's a good question so i have so i have a two dungeon one dungeon master is running a full-time campaign like every two weeks uh i'm running three of those games and then another dungeon master runs one shots within the world but then we consult together because those one shots affect the chain affects the course of the world as well and often he runs uh one shots that might have taken place in the past um all of the dungeon masters have uh have we've broken up the we it's 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 still mostly me because we don't i, I would like there to be more of us um but we've we've divvy, divvied up some of the um the ownership of the gods so when i'm dealing nice. with the god of like perforos the god of the forge if that's not my god i go talk to that dm and ask that dm how should i run perforos in this game or can you show up for this game if perforos is supposed to show up oh, in sweet. all his glory so we had one game where uh towards the last part of the game the last hour nylea the god of the hunt shined her light and so my dm richard even just jumps on the call 
as Nylea <laughs> and starts oh, that's running. Awesome. The, that's fantastic. The that's I then just <laughs> pass the ball to DM. I mean, to him. And so from then on, I was no longer dungeon mastering. He dungeon mastered the last hour and a half of the game, that's and awesome. I just watched. Was <laughs> so this your I- was this your idea to set this up like yeah. this and do this? <laughs> it's that's fantastic. Life, it's like so. the DDCU. It's like the D- <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons cinematic universe. Yeah. And so players start, you know, they start hearing about other players' stories and like what's <clears> going <throat> on. And so one group, one group two weeks ago was in the arena, right, fighting in like the gladiatorial games. Well, two weeks later, one of the other groups is helping that group but they don't know they're they're fighting the they're fighting in the barracks underneath the floorboards of the arena so they can hear the floor shaking they can hear the tigers and the crowd cheering but they're down like in the the muck of it trying to make sure that the second and third wave don't get to the players above um even though the player they aren't really there right the, these other players are just npcs to them but they're all kind of in the same world at the same time. That's fantastic. <laughs> that is really cool. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. So yeah. that's what I've been working on, you know, and then just sharing my sharing my love for the craft on Instagram and when I can, for sure, man. That's great, dude. I always yeah. like I I like the different ways in which you present the the campaigns that you run because it's so like you said, everyone has kind of their, you know, their own style and their own take on it. And I think your style is I think we you and I strive for similar things, but I think we run thing we do things differently in terms of how we present games. I think the thing that really and this kind of even could lead into the topic we want to talk about tonight is this um, this idea of terrain and you you know does it add does it take away how do you use that in the game world? Um, oh, FC Byron is here and he's saying Brian, <laughs> screaming out Brian. Uh, you, who is that Brian? Is that one of who, your buddies? Who is that? FC Byron. FC Byron Heights. Oops. I don't know. Who is that? I don't know who it is. <laughs> I don't know. We got we got a lurker. I don't know. I don't know, who it is. <laughs> I don't know what your Brian, screen name is. That guy. Uh, now they're laughing at us all together, which is good. <laughs> he said, "They said, come on, man. I guess that you just forgot a friend, which is not good." So, oh, uh, that's well, come that's on. Okay. That's all right. Dang. We'll spread. Hold the on. Word. Let me check my. Uh... Yeah, check your DMs. No, it's it's Mike. I don't know the Twitch it's handle. Mike. It's the Twitch handle throws throwing it off. It's Mike. Oh, Mike Heights. Yeah, it's Mike. Oh, okay. What's going on? I never. How am I supposed to know your 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 screen name for for Twitch or whatever? You're supposed to know everything. It's, we're on a yeah, Twitch stream. <clears throat> this this um this terrain thing. Um, yeah. I was gonna ask and just lead it off actually to both of you because you guys both I think Brian you mentioned last time we were on like hey maybe we'll find a place where we actually disagree. I think this is a topic where we'll actually disagree because you Ooh, guys good. both you guys let me put it this way. How about each of you describe the way in which you conduct a game, especially in this remote climate that we do games in or in person? Like, what do you have on the table? What does it look like? And why do you do it? And then maybe we can kind of get into some of the, the X's and O's. Brian, what do, what's your, what do you set up so that your players see and, and why? Well, so it, it's evolving. So, the, you know, the whole topic tonight is, is basically my answer is predicated on a deeper discussion about this whole topic because I have always used um, uh, dry erase and markers, okay? Being a designer, I, you know, I can draw a halfway decent map um, uh, so that, um, you know, even just a, a flat map on a, on a dry erase, um, you know, if I've got time to prepare, um, you know, will look um, pretty good to the players. But I do find myself starting to delve into the the terrain, and I have mixed opinions on the terrain uh, topic. So my so table, when so my you table, set it up with the you set it up mainly when you're doing a game with dry erase pen. I do, I do. Um, okay. Yes. So I've got I've got my map out. I've got you know markers. I've got a number of dry erase maps. The card you know the cardboard ones. Um, I think they're the Pathfinder five E ones or whatever, whatever. Um, I don't remember if it's Pathfinder or, or 5e, yeah. but anyway, it's uh, I've got a number of those. So if I know that there are a number of, of encounter locations, I'll even draw them out ahead of time. So that way I can just plop the map on top, which works really well. Um, I won't get into my thoughts yet. Uh, I'll let Malcolm <laughs> explain okay. what he's got on his table, and All which right. I've seen some of the pictures of, and my head just explodes. I'll try to do the same thing then and not get into my, <laughs> right. my thoughts then. Uh, I try to conduct a game... It's weird. It's it's from game to game. I will say when it's D&D, it has become more 
creating the, the, the terrain for the game. Because when I play something like Tales from the Loop, I don't use almost anything, right? But Theater of the Mind, and I usually change this little background thing here when I'm remotely to show what NPC or what I will put up multiple different backgrounds. So I, I'm a big, I was always been a visual learner. So visual, visual reference is really important for me, but it doesn't have to be terrain. Well, now, when it comes, now as you can see, if you've seen any of my posts on Instagram, yeah, there's a lot of terrain now. And so what I'll try to say what I do is similar to what you were saying, Brian, is if you're drawing out multiple encounters, which is extremely time consuming, but I will build two to three encounters. And it sucks because when you never use the other two that you spent an hour building, you just take pictures. At least you take pictures yeah, for the gram. Great, I'm going to put them on ID take, and I'm going to have sad it's music plays. Nice I you get to take the picture for the gram. And you tear the dungeon apart. You <laughs> I know, I'm son of a bitch. <laughs> I've done that so many times. I'm like, do I really want to reset? No, I'm going to bed. Yeah, or you're so tired and it just looks the mon the miniatures are like, yeah, forget uh -huh. it. You know, you just like let it go. So, but that's my approach is to try to kind of do the same thing. Create multiple encounters that I may use and build them and then try not to try not to I still try not to make myself stick to them if the players go a different direction uh, I also am a little obsessive because then I find music for those builds and then I find backgrounds for those builds for the green screen and they're all different see, it's when never I just like your feed man every time I see your like little <laughs> teaser videos where you just have like a little 10 second thing with like tales for the loop or alien you have some kind of perfect soundtrack plan that I either have never heard of or was just too lame to not listen to every time I see that I'm like god I I could be so much better at all of this and and it just gets me so excited and I'm like god I want to get in there and play and I want to do it and like I got tales from the loop I've got alien and I'm like if only I can just harness a little bit of that 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 you kind of get that little essence of what it is right there in those little snapshots. Like, you do a great job of that, man. I'm just yeah. a mimic, man. I'm just a, <laughs> you know, I... No, fr fucking own it, dude. Like you know, what, what I own by that is, like, I often tell... Now, here's the thing, and don't get me wrong, everybody's watching, I am not trying to compare myself to Quentin Tarantino, but one of my favorite directors... But you're gonna. That when people watch his movie... Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm kind of about to do, is, like, say, if there's anybody I aspire to be like, even though I don't think my gaming style is anything like that, is that all... When I break down his tricks, I, I love film, right? So I love multiple directors and i can go to each director and tell you like why i love kubrick and why i love but what i love about tarantino is unabashedly like he doesn't care he pretty much is just does what he's inspired by and then he just he just makes a, a monster mashup of that thing that he loves and then presents it to you like it's brand new and then he counts on you to look through it and be like you took that from you took that from this. You took that from that old movie in the 70s. Oh, you took that track. He even says, like, when he starts a, you know, a script, he just starts with the opening scene. And then after he writes the scene, he goes in his music room and he just starts listening to music because the music is so important. So for me, half of my campaigns are half-baked. And I just listen to music and dive into these. <laughs> and I get into these weird spaces where I'm listening. I'm like, this song is my boss fight, but I don't even know why. Right? And it's like, and then it's trying to make the connections to, like, this song is going to be what I play when when I try to like murder everyone yeah, in the this game. Is what's gonna happen. <laughs> I will say you do a fan the, the 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 audio in the green screen. I don't do green screen and I will I would I will freely admit I'm I am lacking in the audio department. I got to I got to up my game there but your yeah, your overall package, uh, you know, your stream they're just I mean, they're just awesome. It's awesome. The um what was I gonna say? Shit, shit. To, like the thing that that brings to my mind is like, I saw a, I, somebody shared it on Instagram today. I forget who it was. I think it was Gary Gyax Day with there was some Gary Gyax quote, and and it, the quote was like, you know, that let's never tell something along the lines of let's never tell the dungeon masters they don't actually need any rule books or they don't actually need any rules, <laughs> like, and that to me is like kind of what you're just saying mal is that's what that reminds me of like as long as you have the essence of the story in your head and what you want to do all the rest of it is just it's just smoke and mirrors to get players there to have that great moment and i feel yeah. like that's what's that's what i feel like a lot of new players really get they get they get bogged down and like i've got to read the rules i've got to have the map drawn perfectly i've got to buy the i got to drop 500 dollars on dwarven forge i've got to get all this shit so that i can do the perfect game so I, and I, it makes me sad when I see that because I'm like, no, no, you just need a, a you just need a sick track where you're gonna go ape shit on the players and they're gonna go, <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Yep. And so okay, so here's my view. Let's just get into this. Let's okay. just get into it. Let's First of all, it. I think 3D printing is is just amazing. If we had 3D printers when I was a kid, 
Oh my god, my house would be thing. I would have about 1 trillion minis in my house. Um and by the way, miniatures are whether I'm playing in person or remote, I'm all about the minis. So that that's just a given. I'm not even this the minis to me don't even fall into the 3D terrain conversation <laughs> because mm, like that's a for whole me thing, man. For me, the minis—it's always minis, even remote. I will—I'll go out and um, I'll buy the perfect minis for my players who live in fucking Canada, you know, and paint them up and be like, sure. "This is you," even though to them it's like a freaking blob on the screen. Um, just because I—I love doing that. Um, as 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 far as the terrain itself, I, I think. I think the phenomenon of the 3D terrain is just mind blowing. I mean, it is an unbelievably awesome thing. And I have, um, so as an, you know, as a player and as, as a D and D nerd, I'm like, yeah, I, I'm all about the terrain. Absolutely. The more, the better. Um, as a DM, I can, I can see where first of all i don't think it's tenable um and malcolm i'd love your input on this i don't really think no matter how modular it is all right i've got some whiz kids warlock tiles mm -hmm. which are actually those. they're are actually those? they're really I live, I live by those things they are okay. really great um and relatively economical economical they take fucking forever to set up there is no like Maybe you have a secret, Mal, but for me, there's no like, oh, this room needs to change. No, it's not happening with right. that stuff. Um, yeah. Dwarven Forge does an awesome job with the magnetic stuff and the and the tiles. So I've also delved into Dwarven Forge. Big mistake. <laughs> First one's free. <laughs> right? yeah, oh, then oh then it's like so crap. Yeah. But with the magnetic stuff, you can shuffle stuff around. Um, now, my view is that, yes, to me, the terrain definitely adds, um, for the players, it adds a level of, of um, immersion, okay? Because let's face it, you know, there are, there are creative players, all right? And there are players that aren't so creative and are, and are not as good at you know, conjuring up imagery in, in their mind, sure, they need you know, much more, much more visual and tactile of like, you know, what's in front of them. So um, I do think that it adds, you know, depth to the game. Um, you know, one of the Dwarven Forge sets I have is, uh, is um, the, uh, the dungeon with all the glowing orbs and the, and the, you know, the plug in led stuff, which is just shit's freaking, cool. it is cool as it's shit. Yeah. I mean, I the first time I used it a few weeks ago, my players just about you know shit them themselves because they're like, "This is unbelievable." And your castle. I love thing, those pictures, by the way, with the the lights inside. Yeah, the well, same thing. Like the castle, I see your castle one, and and it's with the tower, and it's yeah, just it's amazing. Smoke. So, <laughs> in the chat, by the way, Twisted Duo says minis matter more to me than terrain. I enjoy imagining a space myself by the description. I can understand new player adults uh, feeling a bit removed without a 3D terrain. Yeah, yeah, so that's Matt. That's another one of my one of my crew. Oh, nice. um, we talked. We actually talked about this up, the Matt? other day. Um, so the thing the thing for me is there's there's two and I, and I'm I have opinions, but I'm not sure where I where I actually fall <laughs> because a uh, and I won't drone on too much longer because I want to hear what you have to say, Mal. But um, a I, I don't see it, as, and they, A and B kind of go together. I, I don't see it as being very um, modular and expandable, okay? Mm -hmm. You have got to invest, and B was the cost, all right? And they go hand in hand because you, to really truly be able to handle any encounter, mm -hmm. you know, as a DM, I don't want like rooms one, two, and three for published module X, Okay, I want shit that I can use in homebrew or in any of the published yeah. modules or whatever. To be able to, to accommodate any encounter like that, I mean, we're talking literally thousands of dollars of terrain. And, you know, for a critical role or, a, you know, a, a high production value show, that, that's great and that might be possible. For the average DM, I mean, 
it's just it's not tenable to spend that much money and continually spend that much money to be able to do every single encounter not not even to mention now you got uh, you know a, another box full of shit to schlep around yeah okay yeah. which is uh, yeah i won't even go there <laughs> so you know and, and i and even with the terrain even when i got stuff set up with what little that i have so far and i do plan on buying more because it's cool of shit as shit and that's why i said even though i have these opinions i'm still gonna buy more and i'm still gonna use it well i feel like it's different as a dm <laughs> and as a player like as just a collector and a hobby i'm like give me more dwarven forge i build castles with my daughter i love setting yeah. up dioramas yeah but like, there's a bad guy yeah, like totally. I, and I agree. And I agree. But after a point, you know, you know, you've got 50 wall tiles and floor tiles and, and you can build something cool as a DM. You know, by the time you reach a thousand floor tiles and war tile, wall tiles, you're like, oh, my God, how much have I spent on this? Where the hell am I going to put it? You know, true. and I still find myself going back for 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 efficiency and speed. I'll still go back and wipe all the terrain off and just start drawing sure. on the on the on the dry erase again. So, Mal, how do you set your stuff up, Mal? Because you've got so much. I mean, I like the yeah. visuals you use. You do like you do a lot of physical terrain, but it's digit. Like you do a lot of remote games. So, like, how do you was, set that? Like, how do you? How much prep time do you spend? Is it tiring? Yeah. So, I wanted to pick before I answer what oh, I yeah, do. Go ahead. I, did. I think there's multiple ways to address the, the the terrain thing. I do think that terrain is meant for more. Let's face it, I'm 41 years old now, and I just got to the point where I can afford all the terrain I want. Like, and even then, I still can't afford all the terrain I want. <laughs> it's not. It's, I'm still, every time I build something, I'm like, that's halfway decent. I look, and some guys like built, you know, using Dwarven Forge, the same thing. And I'm like, yeah. God damn it. And uh, like, one of the guys I follow online, Ink Mage, his, oh, Dan. his dungeon oh, man. is He's ridiculous. Of... And, and I think what he does is, he, he, I don't know if I'm wrong, but I, the way I follow him, I feel like, week to week he asks his players where do you want to go next he builds out an entire table and then once they're there they're there for they're there for four hours they're there crawling <laughs> yeah, through really? well, he builds so what do you do what do you do i, I want to leave the town and i want to no, go to this we're not doing that. no 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 <laughs> you're getting attacked on the way it's out right? like, what do you want to do right on this street right here we're no. not leaving any town but he creates such a wonderland when those players walk in, they're like, oh, I want to explore that little volcano. What happens if we go over here to the swamp? So I think that's another way of doing it. I don't do it that way, right? I, a, I think another thing for us to remember is that without going on a tangent, I think D&D, &D, we, always, we always harp on like theater of the mind and how awesome it is as a storytelling vehicle. But this game was, a, this game was spawned out of tabletop war gaming. Yeah. I was a tabletop war gamer. Yeah. So terrain was everything to me forever. Yep. Until I realized, what am I doing? My money, like I'm in college and I'm going broke. I'm trying to like make, and I'm making the terrain. I forgot but, if we ever talked about this. Did you ever play 40, Warhammer 40,000? Oh, I'm a 40. I was a 40. That's how I, I mean, I, I dabbled in D&D, but I was a 40K. <laughs> that's player. where your first, that's yeah, where your that first $10,000 went. <laughs> and then I just, I remember I realized I, there was this aha moment with fifth edition where I said, I don't need all this stuff to like live in this lore and then you know five years later i'm like now i need all this stuff <laughs> so like, now i, need, all I that. need more stuff to live and i think DD &D, as successful as fifth edition has gotten it understands that its success is is big right now so they're they're definitely going to keep pumping the plastic crack at us and the books well and stuff i, I kind of gonna... also feel like i mean you know, it's. I think it's safe to say that that right now the biggest target audience or the biggest demographic demographic for D and D is us, basically. Yeah. Because right? we grew up with it, and I know that okay. that new players are you know all the time yada yada yada. But um, I think part of it is just like because it's what I said at the beginning. If we had this when we were kids, our our heads would have our, our minds would have been blown. So it's yeah. kind of like, well, now we can have it. So yeah, I'm gonna I'll fucking spend four hundred dollars on, on yeah. you know a room. Yep. of of terrain to answer adam's question i think what i'll it's really shortly what i typically will do is if i don't really know where the story is going i might build a very elaborate open world like wilderness set mm -hmm. for the game and then i'll usually feel like i might be able to rely on it worst case i always tell players like don't re don't rely on terrain because i might we might go full theater of mind there's moments where i don't have anything set I'm like, this whole combat's just going to be theater to mind. Actually, sure. you know what? This combat's not even going to have initiative, right? But I feel like what D&D &D prides itself on is 
it's weird. Even fifth edition has kind of felt like, I feel like players really get into the rules and the minutia of the rules and how they built the character. And so I start realizing they kind of need, they want to know 15, how far away I am from this monster when I do burning hands and all that stuff. And so then what I'll do is I'll build two to three other encounters. And what I'll do is I'll put them on a plate and put them on a, uh, a lazy Susan. And then and I can drop That's those cool. on the table and spin them, you so, know, and put a camera so on them. I'm, I'm, here's what I'm thinking. I'm hearing you talk about this. And I've been thinking about this all, not just today, but I've been, you know, I've been, I've been getting worked up about this for no good reason. And my, I can't talk to my wife about <laughs> no, this because she, she doesn't give a shit. Yeah. So you said we might actually disagree with this. Well, what's well, your, what's well, your yeah, take? I wanna, I wanna hear. Well, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's disagreement. It's just, it's just my, I feel like. I don't agree with that at all. Yeah, you don't. You don't agree with my feelings. <laughs> I want the well. smoke. I want all the smoke. Come on, come on, Adam. <laughs> I, I keep coming back to this. I feel like D and D has become almost a war game, like for many new players. And that's not the way I like to run it. That's the, and again, we've always talked about this. Everybody's fun is their fun. They can have you can have fun however you want. But for me, the reason why like I like I I grew up playing Avalon Hill war games. I um and like you know con sims like real strategy war games i did a little bit of tabletop war gaming and so to me that's like its own thing in D and role playing in general i love it because it's so story focused and i feel like there's this shift where we're going like almost into this war gaming element where like i feel like these new players i want to welcome them into the hobby i want to i want to bring them to the table and it's almost like they see what's on critical role or they see what's on you know people have these incredible setups online and they're like oh man i you don't you don't have all this shit you don't have all this stuff like well this isn't D D. it's not or, or they feel it's not D D if i don't buy everything i don't have all these mm. these things okay to i actually i actually do disagree with you oh good i do too i i think good. i disagree on this one <laughs> yes yeah, i i think um what do you I think, think differently that... on I think well first of all your opinions are completely wrong good um <laughs> I, good i think no, I, I think that the reason we may feel that way um, is because that's the stuff that, that gets posted. You're, all you're seeing posted are, you know, these fabulous pictures of the terrain setups and whatnot. Unless, you are, unless somebody is actually casting their game and you're following it and watching it, you're not seeing the in-between role-playing and storytelling and whatnot. Um, you know, I, I mean, in my games, there are some, there are some sessions where... I don't pull out a map and we don't roll dice, you know, but for two insight checks or perception checks the whole night or something like that. Um, same thing with critical role. I mean, there are plenty of episodes where the maps never come out. So I, I don't disagree with you in terms of new players, maybe getting the wrong message when they see that stuff in terms of what the game is about. But then I think it, 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 it is, um, uh, incumbent upon the DMs to basically run a game that is not just okay. That's not just you know Warhammer forty thousand you know and actually is D and D. Um, but again, you know, to each his own. And if you got players well, no, that's, that, that that's just want to roll, that's kind of what, I'm, kind of what I'm saying. Not to be not to be a wuss out on it because I want to disagree with you, but I feel like there's these the DMs are trying to kind of pull in one direction. And there may be new players coming in that are expecting something different. And so there's this this misalignment at the table in some respects about what we're setting up to do. I don't know. I might be just full of shit and just be. I, no, I don't, I, just, think I, don't I don't think you're full of shit. I don't think you're full of shit. I don't think it's ter terrain. I just think it's, it's, I mean, you could do that. Turning it into a war game, I don't think depends on the terrain. I mean, you could just have, you know, a whole session of rolling dice with, with a paper map. I like I think to it's cast just, a different villain. I think it. I think it has a lot more to do with uh, online software stuff. Uh, online tabletop systems like Roll Twenty. I think they create an archaic version of the game that feels like a video game. That I will Players agree with. Of being introduced yeah. to the game on critical on those. Everyone sees the Dwarven Force, but a lot of my players, especially players that get introduced, they've never played with all the fun, cool toys. If anything, they play yeah. a lot on Roll Twenty, and they get so used to staring at a flat map and moving their character here. And because even though I use terrain, I it's a visual reference, right? Like I might, yep. you move thirty feet and you're five feet away. I'll, I'm not gonna be like you can't get to that bad guy. I'm gonna yeah. be like you rush in, and you yeah, know I'm just gonna keep the enough. narrative going. It, it's 
that 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 set is a set it's a set piece it's like a movie set for me i'm just trying to convey the action and give you something to grab onto if you don't have the same level of imagination that i have or maybe because you your mind just thinks differently right sure but i think there's a lot of i think it's a systems like that and there's a lot of dungeon masters like you said adam that are leaning too heavily on the rules and like not seeing that one cool rule in the dungeon master's guide that says like all the rules are as relevant as what you see fit you know to the narrative um and i think there's a lot of people playing the game like that and there's a this new generation also are <laughs> kids Jay, today Jay, sorry I'm a, yeah i'm a old hit you, hey, you guys, get another old bearded guy it. i was about to say bald but it. you actually have hair D &D was the first video game the, all everybody had now me and my brother were all like jrpg players japanese rpg players final fantasy players so you we, oh, tactics yeah. players so we're all like trying to replicate video games. I mean, a lot, a lot of times I feel like I've, hey. I've sat at tables where I go, you're replicating video games here. And I'm saying like, and that's why I try to break from it. I try to replicate movies because movies are a bit looser in their, in their play style. But yeah. It's hey, just... I actually had the original Pong when I was a kid before I ever started playing D&D. &D. <laughs> and I'm not joking. I, hey man, I am 100% no. serious. I, I did not. I agree with man, everything man. you just said. I hate oh. Roll20. I'll just say it. I don't like Roll20 at all. I know, man. Because like what you said, it turns it into uh, a video game. I, um, I actually, to, 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 to piggyback on what you just said and kind of the, the, the vein of Roll20, I... We run a ton of digital games with what I do, and I actually try to steer clear personally of using any of those online platforms. I actually just use like, I'll just put up an image and I'll just put some circles on it. Be like, you're here, here, and here. Let's get into it. Yep. And then I take it down and then we talk through it because I think it really can drag the game down so much. And to me, pacing is everything. Like Mal, you just mentioned, like keeping the story moving, keeping it going. Like when I first started running games, people were like, well, how do you, you know, how do you, how do you, tell a good story and i'm like just keep the story moving make it interesting yeah. give people challenges give them interesting things to do yep. and i find like when i first started setting up games i would go to the bar when i was doing it for money i would go and i would set up all my shit and i had all this stuff set up and it i was exhausted before the game started and i was <laughs> like oh my god and then yeah. the game and then afterwards i take it all down and now i would just you know i would just show last time i ran a game in person i showed up and i was like here's a map here's a tree you know, and here's like five minis, so like let's play. Yeah. And, and and I just, I want it so badly to be about the story because I feel like that's what D&D &D and role, yeah. I, should, I don't want to just say D&D because &D I'm talking about role playing and I think there's this thing. Role, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Use D&D yeah. &D with the whole hobby and I see that a lot with younger players. Like, oh, I got to play D&D. &D. I'm like, no, we can also play Star Wars. We can do Alien. They're yeah. like, there's that. There's Alien? Oh my God. That's why I play the other games like Morgorg yeah. Morg and Tales because I don't have to build all that I shit to play those I ran a poll on my games. IG about, a, about six months to a year ago and I, I said, what is the name of the hobby where we sit basically sit down at the table and do these things together? Together. And ninety percent of the people said D and D, and ten percent yeah. of the people said tabletop role playing. <laughs> tabletop role, yeah. It's crazy. And so wow. it's, it's an interesting. I mean, kudos to Wizards oh. for. I mean, oh. it's the marketing. Well, it's like it's like, it's like Coca Cola, Kleenex, yeah. and Q tips. Yeah, I'll have a Pepsi. You know? I'll clean it. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Clean it. I'll, I'll get a Kleenex, yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Um, I, was, I don't know where I was going with that. You know, Hold you on. you bring up. Uh, I'll, I'll say one thing. You bring up a good point about pacing. That's another thing with the uh, with the terrain. Um, there's a point at which. Uh, regardless of what your or, uh, opinion is on on whether you, whether it's good or bad, if you're using it, there's a point at which um, it does slow the game down because there's just too much crap on the table, you know. And it's like, oh, this this piece came, uh, you know, came loose, or this table slid across, or whatever, or I, I got to move somebody thirty feet, but I got to rearrange the whole thing, you know. At that point. Um, uh, that also becomes, uh, we talked about that the other day too, my yeah. uh, buddy Matt, Twisted Duo said that the other night. It's like, there's a point at which it's just too much shit to deal with on the table. And, you know, it just, it 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 draws out the length of a com of an encounter even but you, longer. But you can blow it up whenever, see, this is what I love about the game is that you can blow that up whenever you want to. You can decide to disengage from that. You can, I often, yeah. Like, make something happen that changes it turn the camera off you know and uh, i think one of the biggest sellers on how I, that's why I like often yeah movie references are always big for me and also i think as a dungeon master especially since i've been doing it online you're a dj you're setting the tempo for the party 
it's like, mm-ts, 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 mm-ts. Mm-hmm. and you just got to be able to, and you got to know when it's time to go, mm-ts, mm-ts, duh, and you got to know to bring it up here, and then you got to know when to like drop the full bass, bah, 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 and then okay. bring it back. Mm-ts. So not only and do so we need a, a, lot of that we need a producer on. for the show, we also need a DJ with a full rig set up. It's, yeah, and so I feel like that's what I'm doing a lot of times. I'm controlling this music. I'm setting a pace. Okay, well, I don't think we need this tabletop anymore. Turn that camera off, right? Change mm. the background here. Take us to a new setting. Pull up a snap. Like I, one of the big things for like games with no that you if you guys ever want to get away from uh, running tape like the actual miniatures, it's it's a lifesaver in my Alien games is just to use these different backgrounds, a hall of the Nostromo mm-hmm. sound. And then uh, what's also a really cool feature is everyone, some people are using, you've probably seen using the snap camera filter. So changing your face whenever oh, nice. you yeah. want to, right? Like right now, now I'm, a, <laughs> and now I'm Leona. <laughs> Just like that, right? Why not? <laughs> that, this stuff oh my is, God. this is the new, you know, this is. <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. I never That's thought I, I had students do that all year last year in class, and I never thought I they never could thought... use that in a game. And, yeah, and I'm, that's why I'm glad you're here, man. All your NPCs, all your you know. Oh, that's great. See, this is why this is why Malcolm <laughs> is so good at what he does. If you have a chance to play in one of his games, you should do it definitely. Hands yeah. down. Oh man. Hey, Twisted. Next time, by the way, Twisted had a question for us here. Yeah. Twisted said in your Twisted said in your collective experience, do you find 3D terrain lends itself? to more wargaming and role playing falls off the, to the wayside. So like if you so basically if do you if you have all the 3D terrain are you going to more go toward war, uh, the war game or does it actually help new players get immersed and role play and it does it foster role playing? So does it kind of lead one way or another or does it kind of depend? I, I think I think a little bit of both and again I think it's how well the DM utilizes it. Like if you're if you're trying to force its use um you know just because you built it uh before the session you know not good um if if it's if it's just too much uh yeah i I think it's how how you utilize it again i like malcolm's um analogy that it's basically just a set piece it should not dictate the story it should it should support it um so i do think that uh there is the possibility of that happening but again it falls on on us to make sure that it doesn't um and to and to still you know for me role playing the storyline will always be more important than you know whatever 500 your plastic dollar, toys more important yeah, than, than your the plastic, plastic toys yeah. yeah so you know like I, i'm perfectly content doing three hours of shopping in water yeah. deep or you know okay. shit like that so so yeah i do think it definitely has the potential for the uh to be that or for that you know to 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 uh for that to happen but um i think it, it's how the dm utilizes it mal i think i agree with you i think 100 percent. Like, i wish i could you know disagree just to have some fun with it but i think that it, it is um i think that it's about how the dm uses it and it does often make sometimes sometimes depending on the set piece i have to work harder to keep the narrative going because players sometimes want to focus on the, the minutiae the combat um, other times it's helpful. And, and I will say sometimes what also helps, like you said, is to throw them off by sometimes I'll build a set piece and put it on the board and like share it so they can kind of see where they're at and to get them thinking like, oh, so get them away from thinking the critical role thing. Like if the, if the set comes out, we're going to have combat or there's going to be encounter. Sometimes that set is just there to inform them what things look like. So I can yeah, kind of describe yeah. lightly and give them Same. something to go off of. And then we'll, we'll leave that scene and I'll be like, you had that whole setup, but we didn't do anything in there. I was like, no, no, it's just so you guys could, you know, mm-hmm. you could have, you could have fought the guard, town guards, get a game, but nothing happened. So <laughs> we'll move it. Yeah. So I think as long same. as you as a dungeon master don't get bought in or married to the fact that I built this. So I have to have something, you know, <laughs> it's a mimic. It's coming happen. out of somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's going to eat you. So I love, I, I love how, how Mercer every once in a while, he's like, well, that map is never going to be seen after never. spending all weekend building it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you learn some hard lessons one thing i'm going to do what you that. what you said before about like the green screens and whatnot i think uh, this none of that stuff ever occurred to me i think next time obviously this will only work on a remote game uh, unless i start poking people's eyes out but <laughs> next time somebody casts darkness i'm just going to sh- shutter the camera i'm going to close the camera so <laughs> yeah, sh- just boom everything just Where's black i love it i love it i love it that's great 
That's great. Uh, guys, yeah. I we were going to go. How long do you guys want to go tonight? We're going to go 45 or we're going an hour. What do you guys want to no, do? No, let's go. Come on, Mel's on. Let's go an hour. It's a day ride. You know, I didn't know if anybody wanted to have some milk and go to bed. I Hold on. Let me let me pour some more milk here. There you go. Yeah, some more yeah. milk. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, this, is, this is something I'm my, curious. My I want horn to pick your milk. guys' brains on this because there's a lot of things that we've all been kind of talking about in this this dialogue centered around terrain, but a lot of stuff's come out of it. Music, you know, you mentioned uh, Tarantino, Mal, and the idea of creating the, you, almost a, a movie-like experience, you know, being a DJ. How much of being a DM, I mean, I guess, I don't know how to freaking ask this. How, how, how much of this is, and it feels almost self-serving, but I, just, I don't mean it that way. I, how much of being a DM is a task versus an art form? Hmm. Because I keep thinking about this, yet? like, okay. like they're like, how much of it is just kind of this intangible thing that where we kind of put all these things together, and it depends on the person, and or how much of it is just like X Y Z. How know? much? How much should it yeah. be, or how much is it yeah. most of the time? Either I think one. The, either one. From your perspective, I think it should be. Doing? I think it should be like eighty twenty art form versus task. I think. I think. It should be, but I think sometimes yeah. you fall. You're, you, I, there are yeah. moments when I find myself like, "Oh my god, I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I have to." Yeah, and I'm starting to get burnt. You know. Yeah, and then the descriptions yeah. start to fade away. And I the, do that with initiative. Know, I hate rolling for initiative. What I lo- like, what I love to do is if someone, like logically, if someone's nearby, I'll just give them the first attack. Or if like the players are unaware of what's going on, I'll just let the bad guys get them, and then we just kind of use common sense to go through it. So that's one of those rules where I'm just like, I hate that. I hate going into. I love what you're saying, but I I find I always get pushback from the players. Based yes, on, they're the I ones get, who care. See, I, they want that's interesting because they play that game yeah. that way. But when I yeah. play other, like I play Alien, like there's no initiative. Tells there's no initiative. It's just kind of it's just free. It's a conversation, yeah, right? It's free form. But I think when you I have love... like when you're a rogue and you need like what is it? I don't know what that ability is where you got to you get to if you attack first and initiate. Yeah, it's like yeah, one. whatever. You... I don't even know what it is. I'm the DM. I don't know. I'm like you have it. Great, go ahead. You get to kill some shit. <laughs> assassinate <laughs> there it is <laughs> um, see you're better DM than I am right right. I you love win. as a player I, yeah I, as a player I <laughs> see I'm 90 10 task versus art form <laughs> as a player I love rolling initiative that's like the first like yeah I got an 18 or fuck I'm going on two you know <laughs> you know what Adam I've come to get used to, I hate I used to hate it too because it used to feel like set, all the tension just went <sighs> Yeah, you know, and then I'd be like, "Oh, now here we are putting it all together." But now, what I've I've learned to try to do for myself, what's worked, is build it up, drop the roll initiative, take a five minute break, and then like kind of leave it on a cliffhanger right there. And I then like usually that. that gives me a chance to, and then you you know kind of build up and get ready for how, and then come back ready to like reintroduce something that happens at the very beginning of the battle to kind of like. Oh shit! It's oh shit moment back. After I we like put that. All those initiatives. So you still have some kind of storytelling power. You take a little commercial break. You come back and. Yeah, because you know a lot of monsters in D twenty like have layer actions that happen on twenty on like the twenty set. So like as soon as you come back from that little commercial break, you know you're suddenly stalactites start falling. Everyone may give me a dick save, and now we're in combat, right? Like I it, like that. That's super random, but give you something you, to get it right I, back in there. I guess you could also pre-roll the initiative for the encounter, including for the players. I mean, you have their stats. You could. I used to do that, actually. It just uses a lot of work. It's like I would have them roll yeah. five five initiative rolls before and then give them to me like at the table before the game even started. Huh. And then I would like put them all on a sheet. And then I forget. I'm probably trying to figure out. And then I would roll... I would I would just I would roll a dice or something like that, and then would I would literally have to just look down my sheet and go so and so is this so and so is this so and so they rolled them before game, but I yeah, that's cool. Were. I like you just, that. You just know the order. I like that. I and often once that. initiative is rolled in my games, I rarely ever reset it. So even if the combat ends, if something if it chains into another event, I keep that same initiative. I don't re-roll initiative. I will see that's smart. I don't, I should start doing that just because I want to roll every encounter. Yeah, you, you, that's a <laughs> <saying. Everybody's laughs> really. <laughs> If it happens like three days later, right? We go through a montage. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, I'm gonna. Re- but if God like damn that three that I rolled forth, four years ago is just they turn killing around, me. A yeah. dragon's there. I'm not gonna have a. Re- I'm like, look, man. Like, okay, you're everybody's at their initiative. Because usually, what I'll do is I'll have like phases to that battle, and when that boss comes in or whatever, I just it's all he's already been in there. I've just been skipping him yeah. for like eight. Yeah, rounds. he's just sitting there yeah, like, watch this shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's going, so I do the same thing. 
Minions. Kind of, uh, kind of off topic, but I, but who cares? Um, <laughs> Twist is like, uh, don't nerf my rogue, bro. <laughs> hey, damn it! Yeah, I'm so sick like... of these rogues. <laughs> Effing up all man. my surprise attacks for the month. Oh my god! Let's have a yeah, session show where we just like bitch about. He was doing. <laughs> about he was the, doing the, like the classes that we ate. Yeah, he was doing like eighty points of fucking damage like on those first turns, and now I'm not complaining because he was on. Uh, you know, we were in the same party, so but it, our DM was not happy about. It. He's like, what? <laughs> oh my god! Rogue. Um, Spoiling them big again. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Oh, um, I've started using... Uh, I've been using D&D Beyond for a while now, and I think it's fantastic. Uh, actually, um, maybe that could be next week's topic is, is D&D Beyond, because there's uh, some conversation to be had there, too. But overall, oh, yeah. it's I think it's amazing, and I fucking love it. Um, especially, I found that it really helps new players... Um, set up characters and get a feel for classes characters sure. ability scores i mean i've had people that have never played before and i told them create an account and i'll help you if you need it and they're like okay i got my character done awesome yeah um but i've started using the encounter builder uh which has been in beta for 17 years now yeah i don't know <laughs> like i've been using it. <laughs> but i mean it's you know beta. when they release beta stuff it's basically baked i don't know why they still call it beta but, <laughs> but anyway i've been i've been using the encounter builders and that has actually helped um speed up my uh encounters a lot because that yep. you know that handles initiative really well um and the turns and stuff so i don't know have you been using that uh lately or have you that's all i use it it helped keep what i hated about rolling initiative it has mitigated that because i I roll randomly for my bad guys i don't care if they roll it's like all right i hit the button it auto rolls for all the villains yeah and we're in the game we're in the fight so it's like get you guys numbers we're in the fight and yeah it is what it is there's a couple things that it could get better but it's yeah i agree it's just streamlined the process of getting to the to the back to the narrative yeah faster yeah yeah absolutely um oh uh before i forget so i had a t-shirt design done for our new show name logo uh so how many people do we have in the chat right now i don't know like two <laughs> i don't know matt's, we got, we matt's got two, getting a t-shirt. two official viewers but this thing matt, was matt i'll so bring one next three or one matt I'll, i guess you win i'll bring one next week when i come over to your <laughs> Uh, how many people uh, are in the chat? Uh, we've got, I think Mark is still here. Mark's one of the players <laughs> from my neck of the woods. We've got, we got, oh, this is not confusing at all. We've got a, we've got a Mark, we've got a Mike, and we got a Matt. <laughs> that's great. So, okay. So that's, uh, that's well, considering that I know two of them, then maybe all three of them will get uh, t shirts. So, Mark, <laughs> well, I don't know you, but. Mark's a good egg, man. He played in one of Mal. You ran a, a when we first partnered together. You ran a, a charity game yes. for, and Mark was one of the yes. guys who played in that. So yeah, Mark, Mark's Mark. been in my good campaign guy. for a long time. Okay, well, good doing guy. I guess doing giveaways is easy when there's only three. Yeah, these guys are like shit. We're getting free stuff tonight. Hey. This is outlast everyone. <laughs> Like, game, I only right? wanted to shoot at me in a t-shirt cannon. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I won't have it by next week, but I'll I'll get one uh, shortly yeah. after. We're playing. Uh, I get to play next week. Uh, we're picking up again our. Uh, I'm picking up again my level 15 uh, hexblade warlock in uh, Jeff's Ooh, campaign, nice. um, which is based around uh, Norse mythology. So I I believe it's been like a year and a half since we played that campaign, but. Uh, I believe that um, this is the first time back in since the yeah. since the break. Yeah, yeah. Um, for us, yeah. Uh, I think we're. F- I think Loki has just revealed himself to us. So I'm excited but to. Uh, re- related to that, have any of you guys ever? Re- there's the Neil Gaiman wrote uh, the Norse mythology. His take on Norse, like the he did a take on Norse mythology, and he also did an audio book. Have either of you guys listened to it or read that? What was the I name of that? Uh, it sounds Neil familiar. Gaiman. It's just the, the the guy who wrote American Gods. Um, oh wow! And he did so he Watchmen. wrote his yeah he wrote his thing. His Wait, take did he on, do watch? No, that was Alan Moore. I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah, he did. No, what did he do? He did. Um, I think he did Sandman. 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 Yeah. yeah. So he did a take on on. It, it's great. I mean, it's just great pure storytelling. Both the the book and the audio book. It's just killer. Just, right, I'll just, check that he out. Reads the, he awesome. reads the audio book and it's so good. Oh, it's oh so yeah. Good. It's oh, just yeah. like 
I could listen to him read books all day. He's like, Loki <laughs> went over and decided Sweet. to cause some shit and ruin Thor's day, and it was so bad. <laughs> and Thor got very that angry because he was a drunk. So good. <laughs> Anybody, I've always wanted to, always want to, want to, like, run, oh, always want to be at a table about. with Adam. I've still never been at a table with Adam yet. So, you That's know, overrated. Uh, I'm all marketing. It's, <laughs> it's all just marketing. I think like all of you, know, we should all get together and grab a couple other of the DMs and all play and we'll all be like, no, you're doing that wrong. No, fuck you. This is yeah, bad. Yeah, this nah, sucks. Fuck that. It's a terrible game. I can't believe you guys get paid to do this. I don't oh, do God. this. No, I don't know. You're doing the initiative <laughs> wrong, bro. Do <laughs> you're doing the initiative oh, wrong. <laughs> Whatever. Like I've set six sets of homebrew rules going on at the same time. <laughs> no, this is how I do. This is the only way. Um, anybody got stuff they want to talk about? Projects, plugs, things coming up, stuff that's going on in the future. Good. Things. Are um, on. Well, as always, oh, yeah, gentleman some, yeah. underscore game master, not gentleman game master. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, God. dude, I am the worst fucking proofreader just on the shit. planet. No, it, you're. I. I. I it's, it is deserved. Oh, my wife's. Gives, my wife gives me shit about that all the time. I'm gonna start doing it just as a gag. Because ninety yeah. percent of the time it happens on its own, but there's always one little uh, typo or mistake that is on a word, and and half the people will never see it, and half will. But she always catches it, and She'll she always gives it. me shit. I'm like, Jesus Christ! I read over that three times, and I still, I still uh, mistyped it. So that's when that's when my wife would be like, should have read it a fourth. Yeah, right. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I could read it twelve. Do it again. It would st- he would still be the genteel game master. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> genteel. Ooh. Um, Mal, anything you're working? Any new games besides? I know you do the Theros uh, thing. Anything yeah, Theros thing. On in your world, all the games are still on. You know, Meetup. We're the D and D experience point on Meetup. We are, you know, on the uh, West Coast. But if you've got some West Coast time and you want to play some games, I run the Theros games uh, once a month. I also run Alien. I'm a I'm like a Alien Alien super fan, so I run my Alien RPG. When, when do you run that, man? Because that's actually it, something I would love to play. Oh my god, I would love. Yeah, to me too. Alien game. Um, it's on. It's usually one Thursday a month. Uh, okay. I've been doing like a they've been like four or five part mini series uh, hmm. okay. and uh yeah like for example our, our players have been playing this is the we just had our last the fourth episode we're going into now and they just encountered me xenomorph um nice. but the shit is yeah. getting real when you uh let me know when you when you cycle over to a new mini series I, I may I play that that movie a little aside and i don't mean to interrupt but that movie, I remember when I was seven years old, seeing the commercials for that movie and the trailers, and I had this one friend, and he was this kid. I mean, I, I was seven. He might he may have been nine, you know, the older guy. And uh, he was, he just had such a penchant for telling, for storytelling. Mm. And he, for some reason, his parents let him see the movie as a nine-year-old. I don't know how he wasn't in therapy was for the rest the of his life. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah but he, but he, he explained the whole movie. And I, you know, and I, I just, long story short, that movie scared the shit out of me. I had recurring dreams about aliens for basically till I was 40 years old. And I never saw the first one until after I saw Aliens two, Aliens, when I was oh, 18. God. And I finally went back and saw Alien, and it still scared the piss out of me. So the I want to play one this. Freaking haunting. Remember, you oh want to talk about God, being old heads. Remember that we this was a time when we were kids where you would I was seeing the movies around the same like nine, ten, because mm. they were making in the early nineties or late eighties, you're talking about they were making alien toys, predator toys, Robocop, yeah. cap toys for Robocop, yeah. like the Officer Murphy gets his arm blown off. They shoot him like 18. <laughs> my parents always made me close my eyes during that scene. The most terrifying aspect of Robocop is listening to Murphy die. <laughs> multiple times as a child but never seeing it till i was older because it was so much worse in my mind you're going just keep the beat going man i just gotta keep the beat going yeah you just gotta keep it moving i need a popcorn your chest bursts open and your arms fly off so you know you love alien when you know yeah, you know, but when, when so, you describe the beast as majestic and elegant, yeah. I love that thing. Right, <laughs> I, I, I admire its majesty oh and its drive. 
But so yeah, I want to play that. But I want to do it like we got to play like one in the morning or something with your green screen Absolutely. and your soundtrack and all that shit. Uh, oh so, man, we, I'm down. We'll do it. Uh, are Tell you back? Is great are too you back in person play play now, Mal? Too. Out there on the West Coast, do you guys run? Are you running anything in person? I'm trying it. I just started to do a couple games in person. Um, I do them very sparingly. I think online has been a bit of a game changer for people's schedules and yeah. time. And, but sometimes I just like going out and sitting in a bar for I six saw Zombie Side the other night, right? D and D. Yeah. So now sometimes we just have board game days where yeah. I just want a day off and just kind of hang with the folks and, 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 and drink and enjoy. And everybody in the awesome. bar is like, Oh, you're, you know, you're the dungeon guy. Yeah. That's me. I'm the, du- you know, I'm the dungeon master, you know, that comes out here and hangs out. So yeah, yeah it's too, become, it's appreciate. a little less business now, a little bit more pleasure. That's <laughs> nice. good. That's awesome. Yeah, well, then yeah. you're doing it wrong. You shouldn't be having fun doing this. Yeah. yeah so I know, right? Get back no to work. <laughs> no fun at all. One wow. thing I've also done is for live games, I've uh, sh- since I got a printer, I started printing miniatures at a smaller scale and making smaller little s- little sets. So right now I'm doing uh, Candlekeep Mysteries. And so since Candlekeep is all about books, I build every story and it has to, everything that I need for the campaign needs to fit in the book. Oh, wow. Um, I saw that on your IG, that book. Th- I saw yeah. the book. Pro- I wondered what that was. So I didn't you, see that. The whole That's story candle- is in the book. Like you fit all, it all. all the miniatures, all the set pieces, they're all in one book. And I buy these books. I buy these, you know, those like those shell books that aren't really oh, a book. Yeah. It's like a, it's yeah. a box for putting yeah. your stuff. And there's usually three book, book inside of a book. Inside the of shit shelf, they use you know? at Ikea to make you feel yeah. like you're yeah. <laughs> I buy one of those. I fancy it up. And then I print the miniatures. I print all the, the heroes go from 28 millimeter to, I don't know. I don't know what that would be. Like Fif- one fourth yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. 15 with a tiny. Oh, wow. Million. That's awesome. Yeah. And That's then so I, cool. you know, it all comes out of the book and it all goes back in the book. So I'm not lugging a ton of stuff into in and out when I go play, when I play live. So That's yeah. very cool. Printing, I didn't know, game changer. <laughs> I didn't know you got a printer. We, we need to take that offline. I want to pick your brain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll have that conversation. Oh my yeah. God, I love it. <laughs> my, my wife, Irina, will love that. Hey, I'm buying a 3D printer and now there's going to be <laughs> another... 10,000 minis lying around the house. I floated that idea and that idea did not go well. <laughs> well, I see, like, I actually honey, we could turn it into a business. And she's like, bullshit. You just want to play <laughs> I didn't a bunch want of money. <laughs> I, told, I told my friends that I didn't want one. I got one for my birthday. The wife bought me like a pretty decent, pretty cost effective one, you know, yeah. but I, I said, I don't want to get into that. I'm already doing too much. And then sure enough, it showed up. So it's like, all oh. right, well, here we go. <laughs> Before I forget on that note, uh, just to get back to our main topic, uh, as I guess, as a wrap up, even though I know the three of us could talk for another like fucking three hours tonight. Um, uh, I wanted to uh, shout out to uh, Tabletop Things uh, out of New Jersey. Um, he does all of the laser cut wood terrain. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. really fucking cool. Um, cool. I have uh, the boat, uh, the ship, the sailing ship, which, by the way, that actually, if you're doing a, a nautical uh, encounter or, or story arc, that I would highly recommend because it's hard to do a ship and and you know and do all the decks and maintain that you can't fake a ship (laughs) um so that is uh it's really cool and he does cloth sales now and stuff like that so i just wanted to give a uh a shout out uh to tabletop things check it out very cool there's um i don't know if you guys have used uh have checked this guy i think galadoria games they do uh 3d they um i think they print all their own terrain they you can buy it either painted or unpainted um and i bought a tavern from them a while back and it's just it is so nice. the The paintwork, like Dwarven Forge, is more durable because it's that yeah. that yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that plastic stuff. But this the Dwarvenite, yeah, the Dwarvenite. This is all the resin, and I, it's I think it's all made in America. They, they they just expanded their business, but like the craftsmanship on it is just really really it cool. It has a lot of like flavor and and what's it called? And uh, Galadoria Games. Galadoria Games. All right. some, let me double check. Galadora, Galadoria, yeah, Galadora, Galadoria. Wait a minute. So wait a second. So you bought some of this stuff. Yeah, Mister, I don't like the terrain, and and I use a, a a photo with circles on it. I didn't say I didn't <laughs> buy it. I, you know, I have an addiction, and it's all the plastic <laughs> and toys. I just I just say I need it for work, and, and I'm and, just giving you shit, dude. I know. It's a write off. 
I, I swore to myself. Best, that's the best part about this. It's a write-up. <laughs> that is that is it's a write-up. Hey, you, Twisted Duo, you hear that? It's a write-off. It's a write-off. That's a running joke we have. That's a write-off. Um, what was I going to say? I swore to myself I was not going to dive into Dwarven Forge, and I did, and I don't see that ending anytime soon. <laughs> I know yeah. I'm trying to temper and just not speak so that we can wind down and let Adam close us out. Oh, I know. All right, I'll shut up. No, it's right. all good, guys. Like, it's um, all good. Yeah, I'll um, shut up. Let's, really good. let's, yes, please shut up. Please, <laughs> please be quiet. We can only tolerate you for an hour a week. <laughs> this is why we don't normally do an hour. <laughs> I know. It's like, yeah, in the last 15 minutes, they get a little crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Mal, I'm, I just really appreciate you being here, man. Um, Thanks for having me, guys. We haven't yeah. had a chance Anytime. Time, so it's great to I'd see you to, We haven't talked to in do a while. It. I, I think I think you're going to be a regular guest on the show, whether <laughs> whether you like to, like. Yeah. It let me know. Let me yeah. know when you need me, man. Tuesdays uh, are pretty open, so awesome. cool. Yeah. Excellent. All right, everyone. Uh, appreciate y'all being here. If you're watching this on Twitch, please give Brian's account a follow, RPG and Co. And then if you could give me a follow over at the D and D Club on Twitch for trying to build our accounts to just uh, continue doing some of this. Mal is Gentleman Game Master on IG. Mal, do you have a Twitch or are you any other socials? Uh, I have a YouTube. It's 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 not mine. It's really just so I could share the game. If you ever want to see what kind of games I run, it's Gentleman Game Master on YouTube as well. I do have a Twitch. It's, it's uh, not not a Twitch. I'm sorry, Twitter, but no no Twitch. I don't I don't do any streaming right okay. now. I'd like to. Starting to you know maybe something to talk about in the future. But cool. Um, yeah, but but thanks. I appreciate you guys having me. It's always a good time. Yeah, oh, for sure. Thanks for joining yeah. us, man. All right, everybody. Yeah. Same time next week, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, we'll just cast it again on RPG and goes Twitch just cause, uh, for some consistency. I'm Adam Scott. That's Brian Weiss. Mal, appreciate you being here. We're out. Have a good week, everybody. Peace.